Has your sex life fallen to the same old dull routine? Then you need to try Like a Kitten's exciting sex box. You get to choose one item out of each of their six categories, toys, beauty products, lubes and cleansers, games, sexy accessories, and lingerie. Go to likeakitten.com slash holly or use code holly at checkout or click the link in the episode's description. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I am so thrilled to see an old friend who I haven't seen forever, and I'm really excited to hear what he's been up to today. Welcome the one and only Christian Triple X. Hi, Holly. Hi, Christian. How are you? Uh, I'm well. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. I love that you haven't changed at all. We were just kind of laughing right before we started recording how Christian just off the bat started giving me shit right away, which was like, oh, Christian, you haven't changed at all. It's lovely. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. You know what? I actually love people like you who are just unapologetically who you are and say exactly what you think and like give people like me tons of shit because it's refreshing to know exactly where you stand with somebody. So are you saying as a producer that people kiss your ass to get more work? I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I would just I say would. that. I would just say that not everybody is, you know, sure. like completely honest about how they feel about things. I can't say that I am all the time. So you know, you're just uh, you're a unique individual, is what I was trying to say. Thanks. So how long has it been since I've seen you? It's I feel like it's been like ten years. Probably, yeah. yeah. What have you been up to? You know, well, uh, in 2011, I um, got bored and uh, moved to England for a year because I wanted to do scenes with British girls because I like their accent and I love living in England. And then so when I came back in 2012, you know, um, the business had changed a little bit. Um, I was uh, 39, getting older. You lose your your place a little bit. Young guys come up. You know, the cycle of, of being a male performer. And so uh, instead of doing the usual 25 to 30 scenes a month I was doing, I noticed that it was uh, more sporadic, 21, 19, 22, 20, 17. It was, and it was going this way. You, you, it wasn't going to go back up here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's still a lot of scenes, though. Shit. Sure. But it, you could tell the shift was coming. And... Uh, you know, uh, as someone who um, cares about his future, you have to look into the future and see what was happening. And so I didn't want to be uh, um, a guy who held on too long and was down to doing five or six scenes and struggling and can't pay bills and just begging for work. And I just didn't ever want to be that guy. So uh, I started doing, I, I learned what content trade was, started doing content trade, um, started my own website did a lot of trial and error, had a webmaster, used him to learn how to do it myself, started, became my own webmaster, started one site, then two, then three, then four, then five. Now I have seven. And mm-hmm. uh, so now I, I'm a, my own webmaster. I'm producing, I'm performing all the scenes and loving and it. You, and so when you first started, you just had one website called Christian Does the Mall, right? <laughs> yeah, which is a terrible name. <laughs> it makes no sense. It makes like I'm doing the mall, like I'm at the mall doing <laughs> something. And, I was uh, trying to make it sound like I was saying that. Because like I said, I listened to your podcast with yeah. Asa Akira first, gotcha. and you guys mentioned that. So yeah, I was trying it was to make the worst joke, idea but... ever. And again, like I do a lot of different genres, like I always have. So there are big girls, there are porn stars, there are trans girls, and the fans of all three of those aren't the fans of the other two. So mm-hmm. uh, uh, it was dumb. I had to split them up. And, you know, like I said, uh, uh, the best part of becoming, uh, of the change in my career is the learning an entirely new career a new skill a new profession and that comes with you make a lot of mistakes 
clearly that was one of them. So there you go. I mean, what's kind of nice about the adult industry and the fact that it's like always riding the wave of technology is that you really can morph into something else. I think it's a lot easier in the adult industry to transition from becoming a performer to like a director and a webmaster versus I think in other industries. So if you're smart, I think that you can adapt and you can have longevity in this industry. I don't, I don't think it's as much smart as like you have to have work ethic. And that's what I think messes a lot of people up is that uh, as you, as a performer, you get really complacent. It's really easy to show up at, as a guy to show up at 10, do your scene, you're done by one, you make your money and you go home and you do whatever it is you do during the day. So I think you get addicted to that. So I think for guys, it's really hard to transition out of that harder than, than you just made it, to be honest. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, you have to wear a lot of hats in porn to kind of get, especially as a, as a, someone who works behind the scenes, you know, I started off as just a photographer and then I had to teach myself how to shoot video and then you have to produce your own scenes. And now I like taught myself how to edit. And I mean, there's just like, but you know, all of that's achievable if you have a strong work ethic, like you said. My ex-girlfriend took your seminar where you had people out at the ranch to teach them how to do photography stuff. She loved it. Really? Yeah, who Lexi, that? Lexi Sindel. Her name, oh wow! She's a dominatrix. She owns Femdom Empire. Oh my God, that's amazing! She, she came to your class. She loved it. She said it was great. It was very empowering for women, and she really liked it. So uh, I love yeah. that. Yeah, I'm not doing those workshops anymore. They no, were so much. Who's got the time? Work. Yeah, who's got so the time? Work. Right, I hear you. And they weren't. They weren't. I make more money just shooting. You know what I mean? No, of course. But I, I really enjoyed it though. It was really cool to, you know, I love teaching. Um, and also it was just like, it became kind of like a little community cause a lot of the same people came back and, sure. um, it was, it was really fun, but I, I don't know if I would ever do it again, but no, I it was, it. I'm glad I did it. So let's go back to the beginning because you have a really interesting story about how you got into porn. Um, you used to be a history teacher in I high was. school, a high school 11, history I, teacher. I taught 11th and 12th grade yeah, back in so Texas. So how did a man from a small town in Texas teaching high school history become a big time porn star? Well, I, I was from a big town, from San Antonio, but I was teaching in a small town, which is why I was miserable because I was single and just making... 38,000. It was just the worst life. And I was just miserable because I was young and I was in great shape. And I was, you know, I, I, you're just single and miserable and it just sucked. And so uh, I was on vacation during the summer and uh, we were in San Francisco, me and my father. And um, I happened to be staying at a hotel close to, oh, I can't remember the name of the strip club, Levette. Lavette, who was a famous porn star at the time, was featured dancing. And so my father gave me a hundred bucks and said, go out and have fun and basically get away from me. And so I was wandering around single and by myself. And so I happened to walk into the strip club. Oh, oh, Tootsies might not be right, but that might be right. Anyway, I met her. She happened to be staying in the hotel. We hit it off and uh, we married me not a fuck that night. The next night, every night I was there. And we just started having like kind of a long-term, long-distance relationship type thing. And uh, she, f I flew to Night Moves to meet her. Oh, man. <laughs> and I went to Night Moves in 97 when I was still a teacher. And I didn't know who anybody was. And I met Seymour Butts and Bianca Trump and uh, Anna For Mall. Anyone, so for anyone who doesn't know, I find that often I need to make sure that I explain to our audience what we're talking about because it's so easy to fall into porn speak. Night Moves is like an award show in um, Tampa, in Florida, in Tampa, Florida. One where I got, I have t very sketchy and not so great memories from. No, I it wasn't a dorm. great. It was kind of a. It was a very uh, let's say janky award show where they didn't really <laughs> care about the awards. They just wanted to party with the porn stars. I believe the guy's name was Paul Allen, and I think him and his wife ran it. I remember he had a mullet, but uh, um, but I did get to meet a bunch of of porn stars there. And uh, funny, there was a guy doing an amateur videos and he actually, I was having sex with Levette in her, our hotel room and uh, the door was open because everyone there was in porno. And he, I was in like an amateur video that I didn't really even know about till afterward. But anyway, and then I flew to LA and I actually went to AIM, the, our testing clinic mm -hmm. back in, I remember sitting in the waiting room with that fucking parrot 
Um, do you remember that thing? I don't. Well, you see, I never Shit. really went to AIM, um, except I shot their yearly like charity calendar. But Sharon otherwise, Mitchell I never had really like a office. pet parrot that she kept I in the waiting that. room at AIM in the 90s. Yeah. So wow. I actually tested at AIM when I was still a teacher. Anyway, long story short, after a couple of years, I moved to Vegas. I, uh, I knew that knew about the business she was always you could do this if you wanted to and next thing you know i met shishi larue and and uh i met a couple other producers and i was off to the races by 2002 now didn't you send your pictures to shishi larue i and did she she was like i don't have a place for you in straight porn because he was directing for vivid Right. And you had to, you had to live in LA and I didn't live in LA. And so he was like, but if you want to do a a gay porno, here you go. And none of that, we're going to pay you 2,500 and uh, we're going to fly you, pay for you to fly to San Francisco and pay for your hotel. Meanwhile, I was making 2000 every two weeks teaching. And I was like, 2,500. I was like, I'd do whatever. (laughs) Cause I was young and broke. And then of course, when you do, you know, the funny thing about, I think, probably 99% of guys that do their first gay porno, they're like, who's going to (laughs) know? Right. (laughs) Meanwhile, everyone's going to know. All right. Meanwhile, everyone's going to know. So I did one. He loved me. And, uh, you know, I had been, I had been with trans girls before that. I'd never been with a guy. I had just done trans girls. So, which is, you know, similar, but not the same thing. And so he was like, we'll give you some, some trans porn to watch to get hard will be no problem. (laughs) And he did. And he made it so easy. uh, My first scene that uh, I mean, he made it so easy. It was ridiculously easy. And so there you go. So it's, it's funny because I do hear so often from guys who want to be in porn that like, there's this, there's this belief that you have to do gay porn in order to be able to transition to straight porn. Um, well, it's the easier you heard path. Other people say that? Yeah, of course. Well, it's the easier path. I mean, clearly, because uh, nobody in straight porn is looking for dudes and everyone in gay porn is looking for dudes. So it mm-hmm. makes sense that a lot of the guys... And again, what's funny is, I don't know if you've ever produced gay porn. Mm-hmm. Have you? No. Okay. I feel like I would be like really good at it, though. So it's actually, uh, uh, you know, the one thing is... Uh, those guys, a lot of those guys, very 90% of the guys that do gay porn don't identify as gay. And so there's a lot of, uh, you know, I got to look at my phone to get hard and I need a magazine and I got to call my girlfriend or do whatever. So there's a lot of that. So I think, I think it's just makes sense that a lot of gay porn guys go to straight porn because that's their the easiest way in. See, that's so interesting because, you know, I'm not a guy obviously, but I've talked to plenty of men who identify as straight and all of them have said that they could never do gay porn because they couldn't get hard um, because they're not attracted to men. It's absolutely impossible. And anybody who does gay porn must have like some closeted gay fetish or something. What do well, first, you, how do you first respond of all, to that? I think even the straight, first of all, I mean, listen, the, first of all, you deal with a different, different crowd of male performers. When you, the, you know, you're dealing with a select few that come that I'm talking about you specifically, specifically because your browsers, yeah. the guys, I mean, I, Scott Nails, uh, Johnny Sins, Charles Derrick, Kieran Lee, those guys don't have to go anywhere near gay porn. Those guys don't have to do any anything outside of exactly what they do. They're in a different a different industry than the rest of mm-hmm. us. Let's just let's just say that. So so I, I think um uh first of all, if you if you don't have money to pay rent, that's a big motivator. Mm-hmm. Um, especially for most of the guys that do gay porn, you don't have to be gay or straight, but you do have to be basically completely broke to do your first scene for the most part Mm -hmm. um uh producing it that that's what i learned and so and and second like i said so my first scene i'd never been with a guy before and i was like i don't know if i could do it i mean she she goes we're gonna make it real easy I, i i walked into a locker room i strip naked i get in the shower they film me showering they film me taking my clothes off when i get done 
uh, uh, basically, I just have to stand there while this guy blows me. Then I'm laying on my back. I'm not even looking at the guy, and the guy's blowing me and just riding up and down. And then I'm just jerking off all over myself. It's over. There really mm-hmm. wasn't a lot of like I didn't really. It was basically just like a a a, a doll. You know what I mean? One of those yeah. real dolls. You know. So yeah. the, the 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 directors at gay porn are going to make it easy for you at first. And so I think what you said could be true, but and, and also additionally. To be a male performer, even in straight porn, you have to be like a little kinky or, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't have to tell you about the, you know, you know, I mean, come on, even the straight guys have some really random kinks, no? Uh, you know, I mean, I probably, you know, I don't, I don't really, or that's, yeah, butt- that's true. Sniffing. I mean, <laughs> well, okay. Yes, that's true. I mean, to Jerking be fair, off like and rubbing your stomach in a circle. <laughs> Jesus you know what I mean? I mean, yes, you know. yes, yes. Okay. I do, I do okay. and I don't, but like, you know, I mean, I don't really spend a lot of time with most male performers, like outside of like the 10 hours that I spend with them on set. I don't sure. date them. I don't. Sure. But you, hold on. But you like, hire the same guys. So you get to be, you get to yeah. know these guys pretty well yeah, yeah, and what yeah. they're, what they're into and what they're not. Right. I think that like a lot of them probably don't reveal like their deepest darkest kinks to me no but i think when they have to have an orgasm sometimes you have to get to a place where your kink gets revealed because that helps you have an orgasm you know the most interesting thing where i discovered that was when i was shooting for playgirl and i had to shoot guys by themselves and they had to get hard and i was the only woman on set can i that was like a finger in the butthole that sort of thing can you like just show me your tits there was one guy who had a foot fetish and he was like if you just do the whole shoot barefoot i'll be able to manage it and i was like okay and then he was like if i can give you a foot massage in the middle of the day then like i'll be able to yeah, I was like, sure. And, and let's not forget, Holly, that in the last year or two, we've seen uh, people that the Small Hands and Xander, two guys who were 100% straight forever, and now suddenly they go, oh, by the way, I like trans girls. I mean, that just couldn't mm-hmm. have popped up out of fucking nowhere. I was, it couldn't yeah. have popped up out of nowhere. You so can swear I, it's fine. I think even the straightest of guys, uh, if they really, you know, I mean... It, if they aren't kinky, they've definitely thought about being kinky and porno sometimes is a way to get those out. And get yeah, paid for, for it. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, you're amongst friends, like nobody's, well, I wouldn't say nobody's going to shame you actually. So I'm glad you brought that up No, they're because <laughs> I was just going to say, I, so how do you feel about that? Because Christian, I'm sure that you remember when we used to shoot oh, you. Don't get me started, Holly. Don't get me started. Now you see, now I brought it up, but it's just like, listen, uh, Xander, nice guy. I remember when he was brand new, he was living out of a suitcase. I shot him for Naughty America. I used to give him this big spiel about saving money that he never listened to when he was like young. And, you know, he's a good guy, always a nice kid. But for him to now just be like, you know, I don't know, it's the new era and trans pride and trans girls. And we should do, I just was like, where the fuck were you for 10 years? Like, I didn't see you. Meanwhile, you know, it's like I was. I was on the front lines in like 2006 and everyone was saying, you, you, you got AIDS, you're gay, you're going to give me AIDS, you're no good, you're gross, you're disgusting. Oh, I can't do a scene with you. Your test is no good. It's two days old. Sorry, no good. You're going to give me AIDS. I mean, for, for him for him to now suddenly be like, I'm carrying the, the male performer kink banner is hilarious. There you go. Sorry, that's my rant. So for those of you guys who don't, understand why Christian is upset. Christian has been working with trans performers for a very long time and you Since never tried and you never tried to hide it. No. And you it it caused problems for you in your career. I mean, I remember when we used to shoot you, sometimes I mean, kind of Agents, often girls girls would make us cancel you because they found out that you did trans porn, you had did gay porn, and we'd have to replace you, which Christian, can I just tell you honestly now, like it was very, it was heartbreaking for us because we loved you. We loved working with you. Uh, It's just funny to me to see that. And now those same girls are just doing like, they're doing trans, they're doing scenes with trans girls for Evil Angel and Joe and all these, you know what I mean? It's just like, and you know, there's just so many, oh no, sorry, I can't work with you. And then you see them like, you know, sucking, 
trans cock on camera and it's just like what yeah it's it's very annoying and i understand progress and uh but yeah east coast talent all the agents too oh sorry no sorry i can't make her work with you what are you talking about it's just yeah yeah anyway, sorry no it's okay i just i mean i i i remember like when we first started seeing that change in the industry that you know trans performers were getting more visibility and you were seeing more and more people, you know, work with trans performers. I honestly thought to myself, I'm like, God, I wonder what Christian thinks about this. Well, you know, first of all, mentally, mentally, it was so terrible for my mental health to be completely Mm -hmm. honest because being, being, um, being, uh, uh, called, uh, dangerous to people's health day after day by agents, girls, boyfriends, producers, directors. You know what I mean? Like it just gets so old and it just got so terrible. That's why another reason why owning my own sites has been so, so much better, not only financially, but mentally. Now, no one, now I can tell anyone I want to fuck off. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't want to yeah. worry about working for anybody, anybody working. You don't want to work with me? Great. Fuck off. Do you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. That's why it's been so much better because, uh, man, it was rough. It was rough for, for, for many years, many years. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. And I'm sorry about that. No, no, yeah. it's, I don't, I you don't have to, I, I'm not, it's part of the business. And I knew what I was signing up for. I, I, uh, like I said, I, it, and to be honest, in the end of the day, now I have my own trans site and it's like one of the top two or three in the world. So I've reaped the rewards from, all of the nonsense that I had to put up with for so long. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in the end you, you kind of won, didn't you? I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure all the, those guys are, you know, still don't like me, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it is? I mean, you know, the, the trans, um, I mean, trans porn has always, you know, done pretty well, I think, but it's even more so now. What do you think it is about like, and it's usually straight men, right? That are supposedly straight straight men. men. Gay guys don't like women. So what do you think the attraction is? Like, what is it about trans women that is so I think it's the taboo of it all. It's a taboo. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's doing something that you're not supposed to do. It's, it's being with someone you're not supposed to be with. It's a, it's in a different experience. It's a, something that plausible deniability. No, I'm not gay. That's a woman, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, guys are deathly afraid of being called gay. That's the, the biggest fear of straight men everywhere. It really is. It is. Which is why there's so little guys that do trans porn because they're all, you need straight guys and straight guys are deathly afraid of being called gay. So it's tough to get anybody to do it. Do you think so, that's changing? No, I think they're just getting gay, gay performers that want the money. Hmm. Interesting. Um, it, it's, it, I mean, it's, cha- I mean, sure, it's changing because Xander did a scene for Brazzers. Yeah. But I mean, that's just one person. And, and so, uh, I think the trans girls are getting to be more, um, involved in straight porn. Mm-hmm. And so I think if, as you befriend these girls, because they're girls, I think that helps. The Aubrey mm-hmm. Cates, the Daisy Taylors, the Emma Roses, the Natalie Mars. These are girls that that uh, uh, that move in straight porn circles. And it makes it harder to be like, oh, this person's dangerous to my health. Well, wait a second. That's your friend. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So. All right, guys. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And then we're going to come back. So hang tight. Going into a sex store can be overwhelming. You may spend hours browsing the shelves only to realize that you came home with stuff that you can't really use. Or maybe you forgot like one crucial ingredient. This is why Like a Kitten is so amazing because they let you build your own box so you can kind of choose your own adventure. You get to choose one item out of each of their six categories, toys, beauty products, lubes and cleansers, games, sexy accessories, and lingerie. What I love about this is that a portion of the proceeds go to charities that focus on women's empowerment, education, and health. So what are you waiting for? Go to likeakitten.com slash holly or use code holly at checkout for 20% off your box plus free shipping. That's likeakitten.com slash holly or use code holly at checkout 
or click the link in the episode's description. All right, guys, welcome back. So Christian, tell us a little bit about the sites that you are running right now and the niches of each one. And maybe if you have a favorite. Well, uh, I started out obviously doing, um, porn girls, pure triple X. I did BBW girls, big girls, pure BBW and trans girls, pure TS. And I Wait, stole the on. word. Do you, do you have a floss in your hand? Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh and so uh um uh, pure ts girls eye. okay oh, okay sorry and uh <laughs> um so uh i had them all on one site as you said make fun of me with christian does them all and it was brutal nobody joined and then so i split them up and then i realized that no one's joining pure triple x because why would you join to see my janky hundred scenes when you can join browsers and get 10,000 scenes for 10 bucks and naughty America and all these, you know what I mean? So pure triple X, I basically started phasing out uh, years ago. And then pure BBW is obviously a, a tiny knit niche, tiny. So I, I shoot, I shoot for that, but it doesn't, it's not really um, the biggest uh, money maker. It's just fun mm -hmm. to do. I don't know. I just enjoy mm -hmm. doing it. And then Pure TS is, is the big one, and it really uh, kicked off right away. There's less than 10 trans sites in the world. It's, hard, it's a hard niche to shoot. It's, a, a hard, it's really hard to, to, to perform and produce. It's really hard. So mm -hmm. I had a lot of advantages, and it did real well. Um, so I started a, a, a sister site to that called TSPOV because I was flying models in from out of the out of the state or from different states or whatever. So I'd shoot them three or four times and I'd add a POV scene in. So I started TSPOV. Then I realized that there, I was getting a lot of email responses from cross dressers, um, sissies, femboys. I put them all in one little category, non-transitioning trans girls, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I decided to start that site to see if that was, would work. It was called becoming femme and it actually took off even more than pure TS. It's like massive. And, uh, then I start then since TSPOV worked, I thought I'd start a POV site with that. And so I started sissy POV. And so there you go. And then I just started a BTS site called porn star BTS, which is just like mm. kind of just extra. And so right. there you go. And then you have an only fans too, right? I do, but it's just kind of, I mean, you can't really have your own site and an only fans. It doesn't really work. You can't, you, it's one or the other. They're not going to, fans aren't really going to do both. So my only fans is just kind of, I mean, originally it was just because the referral program was so good. I made so much money on referrals. Right. Right. I got to refer the great Lisa Ann because she get, uh, had pity on a poor porn producer. Oh, that must have been a goal. It line. was fantastic. It was fantastic until only fans says, Hey, you know what? We don't need your referrals anymore. So fuck off and, uh, and turn the program off. So didn't, uh, I think, I thought they only changed it where like you could only get the referral fee for a year. One year. Yeah. Instead of forever. Yeah, instead of forever, which is a big difference. And not only that, but everyone who's worth a shit's already on only fans. So mm -hmm. who, who are you going to refer? Who, who are you going to refer? There's nobody. Do you know what I mean? Like there's nobody yeah. anymore. So there's no money to make in referrals. So yeah, that cost me a lot of money. I was, I'm, still bitter and angry to only fans about that but have yeah you found, I, go on have you found that only fans has affected your business in terms of like getting performers to to work with you for your sites of course it's it's damn near impossible if you to get the top girls it's, it's how, how, why why would they work for you hey yeah, yeah. i can make twenty thousand a month sitting on my butt and shooting two days a month on my own or i have to come sit on your set all day like that's just not how it works so i think uh I've never catered to them. Um, when I started my TS site, um, even when I when I produced all the content for Naughty America, they uh, wanted their niche was milfs, and so my goal was to find new milfs that were hot. They found Brandy Love, um, and so on. You, you do know what I mean? Like they they found a lot of the popular milfs for the for, mm -hmm. for the first time, and so my goal was to do the same thing. You know what I mean? Like to bring girls to naughty America that hadn't shot before. Mm -hmm. Evan, like I found Evan naughty, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? In the middle of nowhere and 
she did a scene for my friend's hot mom and went from there. So when I started my trans site, I was like, my goal isn't to shoot the stars. That's, I don't think there's as much money in that as there is in shooting the next, the, the amateur girl, the next star, the new stars. Mm-hmm. And so uh, uh, it's, it, it hasn't affected me as much because like I said, I'm trying to find the new girl. So right. um, although again, even if they haven't shot a porno, some of these girls have made a ton of money on OnlyFans. There's just no, there's just no, they're not going to, yeah. they're just not going to do a scene. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Don't you find it though? I mean, I find it difficult. We used to try to shoot new girls all the time, like for Suzanette. And it was just like, it's hard, you know, when they're new, they don't know what they're doing. And it's a lot, a lot more work to shoot them. Sure. But that's where, that's where, again, but if you can, that's how you make the money because no one else yeah. wants to put in the time and effort to do it. I yeah. can put in the time and effort. So, uh, uh, uh I have it down to a science. I kind of know what's going to work, what doesn't. And again, you end up telling a lot of people to fuck off, but that's just part of the business. And so, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I don't mind the new girls. And again, I'm the male performer, so yeah, I know how to do a scene. So basically I'm just going to th- move the girl where they're supposed to go. So it's, it's, it's easier if a girl's know how to shoot a scene, it's easier if the guy's going to tell him what to do. Mm-hmm. And so that's where that's why good guys are good guys is because they cycle through the scene for you without you having to explain it to you to them. So are, do you perform in all of the scenes that you produce? I do, I do, yeah. And how I'm many ready. of those? <laughs> well, it's also nice to have that kind of well, control. Like so, how many scenes are you shooting a month now? Twenty-five to thirty. Too many. I, mean, I did 289 scenes last year. Don't you get exhausted? Don't you ever like want to take a break or have somebody else shoot? Like, isn't your penis tired? I mean, I just, I've done over 4,000 scenes now. It's funny. IAFD put out a thing saying that, that I've cataloged more scenes than anybody like in the history of their site. So, wow. Um, yeah. I've done 250 to 300 scenes every year since 2003. What do you do? Like, I mean, do you ever have days where you're tired, where you struggle to perform? No. How? First of all, I'm, I'm only shooting. That? I'm only shooting girls that I hire, so I'm not hired if they're ugly. I don't want to have sex with them. That's the first thing. <laughs> Second, I do have a prescription for Viagra. Sorry. Third, <laughs> uh, I'm in control of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So if there's there's no pressure, like the biggest thing why guys fail is because of pressure and stress. Because mm-hmm. they're working on your schedule, not mm-hmm. their own. And so, yeah. you know what I mean? It's it's all me. And second, the girls are more motivated to be nice to me and help because I'm the mm-hmm. one paying them. Interesting. So it's, it's you know, it's a little easier for me than it would be for just a regular, like if I were working, you know, if I were John Strong, yeah, it's a lot harder to have to go on set for everybody over and over again. Yeah, that's rough. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's a little easier. Do you have a system by which you like, do you have a a system that you follow to make sure that you're always like on point for a scene? You know how some guys have like a routine or are you just so experienced at this point? You can just show up. However. I want, yeah, I think Pavlov it's Pavlov's dogs at this point, right? Stimulus response. You see girl, girls naked, dicks hard. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) I think that's, that's a lot of guys. I would assume a lot of the veterans. That's just, you know what I mean? Like, that's just how you're supposed to do. But um, when I was brand new, you know, Tommy Gunn and I started at the same time. Um, we actually started like, I think the same, me, him and James Dean started like literally, I think the same week. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. And uh, he told me about like some, uh, uh, a vitamin regimen that he did every morning. Mm-hmm. Tribula, saw palmetto, over the counter, zinc, nitrous oxide, all this stuff. And, uh, Turns out, like every male performer takes like some kind of, some sort of, uh, 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 you know, some combination of all those vitamins, and that mm-hmm. actually helps a lot. Okay. That actually, the vitamins help a lot. So if I take that in the morning, and then then I'm I'm usually good to go. But yeah, you're also like in really good shape. You're like a triathlete, right? Are you still doing? Are you still doing like, like Ironmans? I and all am. Stuff? It gets harder to be in good shape when you're 47. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you know, you're not, I'm not 27 anymore. And I have a lot more work I have to do outside of just performing. You know, it's easy to be in great shape when you have, you know, when you're doing one scene and then you're going home. If, mm-hmm. You know, if I lived Johnny Sin's life, yeah, I'd be in shape just like him. I mean, that guy, what a charmed life he leads. You know what I mean? Of course he has 12 hours a day to work out. What else does he have to do? And so, uh, uh, but um, uh, listen, he's a friend of mine. He actually tried to do a triathlon. It was pretty funny. He did a half Ironman in Mexico. I was dying laughing when he was telling me about it. Um, but yeah, I, I've always, I've always been an athlete. I played basketball in college. And, uh, um, so I picked up triathlons right after that and I've been doing them for 20 years. So I love to swim. I love to cycle. And I love to run. And you can see behind me, all these are all medals for triathlons I've done. I've done eight full Ironmans and 18 half Ironmans. Wow. That's amazing. Um, what advice would you give to a young gentleman looking to get into the industry? Like you must get the same kind of DMS that I do where like, hi, I'm a guy who wants to get into porn. Can you help me? And you know, I always answer those, you know, everyone always doesn't answer blocks. Oh, I never them, answer them. them. I love answer them. It's, it's fun for me. It's like, all right, let's do this. Cause they never have a plan. They're always got, Hey, I'd love to get into porno. And their Twitter name is like, uh, EFL 947. And I'm like, can he, you know, dude, you got to have a stage name. You got to have some sort of plan. You know what I mean? A picture something. And it's like, where do you live? And they always live in like, you know, uh, 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 Nyack, New York. And it's like, bro, you got to live in LA, Miami or Vegas. Like he's got to be one of those three. And, yeah. uh, and so, you know, none of these guys ever have a plan and it's like, well, you know, I, you can fly me there. And I'm like, I'm not flying you anywhere. Like, what are you talking about? So I I think the key is you have to live in a big city, you Miami, LA or or Vegas, really. And uh, you have to have a a, a stage name. You have to be able to maybe some jerk off videos that you've posted. I mean, especially now with the rise of independent porn, there's no reason why if you're a guy that wants to get into porno that you don't have a Pornhub account, a, you know, you should be chatter baiting probably. Um, do you know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. have all your ducks in a row and then say, Hey, I'd love to do a scene. And go well, that. okay. So, so that's a great point. So start off on these various platforms. What, like as a solo guy account, exactly. because let's assume that you want to get into straight porn. The kind of people that are going to be watching your solo masturbation scenes are generally not women. Uh, I got news for you. The guys, guys watching guys with straight porn are still gay. Are still gay guys watch straight porn too for the guy. Let's mm-hmm. let's not forget Johnny Sins did a solo solo videos and he's doing just fine. I mean, there's so many guys that do solo masturbation. That's not inherently gay. It's just a mm-hmm. solo masturbation video. Who watches? It's not up to us. Right, right. So, are you saying that that is just a good way to maybe create some content that you could send to people that you want to work for, and also get used to being on camera? And you have a stage name, you have a, mm-hmm. a platform, and again, these girl, most girls, especially now that they're all their own little producers for their for their OnlyFans, they're dying to shoot content with somebody, and they sure as hell don't want to shoot with the same guys they've been fucking on camera fifty eight times. A lot of them. Mm-hmm. So they'd yeah. love to have a new guy or, you know, and again, a lot of these girls want, you know, oh, the, the new guy, even if he fails, oh, new, I made the new guy come in 12 seconds. The, their fans eat that up too, you know? Mm. What's the one site that, uh, what was it, Bang Brothers, Reality Kings, the the can he score or can't, sh- you know what I mean? Like there's always those amateur guy things. And okay. So, so I think it's easier to, to get into porno now than it ever has been. Yeah. So... Okay. So your advice would be, cause I just, I know that guys really like would like a breakdown. So, all right, guys, if you want to get into porn, get yourself like a chatterbait account, create an OnlyFans account. Why not? Pick a stage name. Um, pick a stage name. Get your social um, media ducks in a row. Yep. And then create some content. And then what? Just like hit up various female performers and say, I'm looking to do my first scene. Whatever. Again, every scene is a chance to do another scene. So, you know, a scene is a scene is a scene. I mean, all these guys are like, I want to work with Riley Reed. Well, that's not happening, dude. And and again, like the mark of a good male performer is, is that you're just as good with Riley Reed as you are with some brand new girl who doesn't know how to do a scene, you know? So, yeah. So, uh, uh, 
you're not going to get hand you're not going to get to hand pick who you film with so you should be able yeah. to film with everybody and so yeah. and again a lot of the lower level girls i mean lower level like don't make as much money as some of the big name girls are still looking to shoot content and it's mm-hmm. it's easier to get in with them so you start there and work your way up Mm-hmm. And then also, obviously also, I guess you would want to wait until you schedule a scene with somebody, but you also have to go get tested. Too. Oh yeah. Sorry. That's, that's a big thing too. Yeah. Definitely yeah. have to get tested. Sorry. I didn't mean to. No, no, no. I mean, you have to get booked on the scene with somebody else, right? Before you can even go do that. And that's something that the girl you're working with would hopefully, you know, tell you. I think, I think do. even if I didn't get booked with a scene, I think I would get TTS tested just so I have a record of being on TTS and I could show them a test. Oh, yeah, hey, listen, it's idea. been a while, but I've, I've been there before. Here's my picture. Mm-hmm. Here's an old test of mine. I'm ready to go mm-hmm. whenever I'll get tested whenever you need me to. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you I'm understand the protocol. Cuts. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so TTS and is, you've got is... a piece of paper saying you've been there before. Here, yeah. Here's and me you... without any kind of STDs. And also, too, it also verifies your age if you've gone there. Oh yeah, because they'll yeah. yeah they'll they'll take your ID and they'll verify that you're of the age of eighteen. Which I guess actually they would have already done if you have a Chatterbait platform or an OnlyFans platform because same thing they would have verified your age. So do you have an OnlyFans? I do. Uh, do you? Is it performing? <laughs> I mean, I'm not performing, but I'm naked on it. Really. <laughs> I've never seen you Please naked. don't join. I'm going to be like so embarrassed. Years. I've never, I've never I seen you naked. I don't even know. Wow, that's crazy. I've never even thought about it. Wow, that's awesome. I only started doing it like two years ago. It was. God, I can't of, imagine um, how much money you'd make if you filmed a scene naked. I like, I have a lot of requests, but I don't If you think recorded yourself happen. filming a scene naked would break the internet. Oh, shucks. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But yeah, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I'm too shy. I don't even like looking at the mirror in the mirror at myself when I have sex. Like that's, that's, yeah, it's just weird for me. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Back, back to you. Um, (laughs) so what do you think is the biggest misconception that people have about the porn industry? That's a good question. I think that it's not really a business. It's just people like getting together to fuck like we're in the mm-hmm. 70s still and we're in New York in some hotel doing, you know, those silent nine mil- eight millimeter things. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just I just think it, they think it's not really a business. They think it's more like a party mm-hmm. and they don't understand like how regimented and regulated it is for the the people that do it for a living. And you can especially speak to that having been somebody who produced and directed for Naughty America because I did the same for a small period of time. And they are, of all the clients that I've worked for, and I've worked for everybody, they are the most particular about paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They're, uh, yeah, there you go. Listen, the best part of working for Naughty America was I got to take the train to San Diego and there was nothing more relaxing than the Pacific Surfliner from Union Station to downtown San Diego. Interesting. I hear it's funny because one of my questions from one of my Patreon members is what was it like directing and producing for Naughty America? Do I like sense some hesitation on your part about uh, that? Well, I mean, you know, they're, uh, they were They, um, Is this you being diplomatic? <laughs> I mean, well, I, I mean, you know, they don't like, they don't, their, their, their timing and schedule is uh, uh, not great. They, um, they hire producers that they know are going to do things a certain way and they can get away with it. And that means using me as their savings and loan bank. Um, mm. and so, uh, uh, I think I know where a, you're going with this. Okay. It gets to a point where I had spent my career, um, saving and saving and saving, and I didn't want to blow it on, uh, something that I didn't own. Right. Right. To Understood. Catch my drift. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. But, and also they that. fired my best friend who was the head of production. 
they they got rid of her too. That that actually had something a big something to do with it. Oh, I'm sorry. Does her name start with an L? Okay. Yeah, but it was not the L you're thinking of. It's the one before her. Oh, okay. The one after her I... that you're thinking of. Uh, no, she was the makeup artist when she first started, and then moved oh. up to take the job after they fired the other L. And she was, oh. uh, you know, she's very nice and a friend, but uh, um, corporal chill. Anyway, continue. Yeah, there was always like a lot of mysterious behind the scenes stuff happening that I wasn't party to. So like, yeah, I had no idea what was going on there. I just did my job and turned it in my stage. We could talk about it off camera. I'll tell you some great stories. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, has the stigma of being a porn star affected you in your personal life? Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, you know, uh, my parents are doctors. I have two bachelor's degrees in history and secondary education. My brother has a degree. My other brother has a degree. They got normal jobs, wives, kids. And so, uh, when I, uh, you know, your parents want nothing more than to brag about their kids. And so your when your parents are, who are, you know, conservative Catholic Texas, uh, 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 older people, they can't exactly brag about their kid being a porn, uh, a porn producer. So, uh, uh, that led to a lot of, a lot of problems, you know, um, it, 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 you know, it's no fun. And also remember I, all my friends, I played basketball in college. All my friends graduated with degrees. They went on to, to own their own business and be business owners and in corporate America. And you see, um, the, this guy who got into porno as a career. So, uh, it's been, it's, you know, I've had to, con my whole, my whole career has been constantly having to tell people that even though I'm in porno for a, a career, I'm still the same normal person that doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, pays his taxes. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, uh had never been arrested, doesn't get tickets. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. has a savings account, owns his own house. I mean, I'm still a normal person. I'm not, I'm not, you know, uh, 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 Mark Wahlberg and Boogie Nights. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not like a sexual deviant or a criminal. No. Well, maybe I'm a sexual deviant, but not yeah, like actually, that. I just really, I, as soon as I said that, I was like, maybe this wrong choice of words. Uh, yeah, maybe you should yeah. say just, like, just not the illegal kind. I'm a right, legal right. So yeah, that's been the biggest, <laughs> that's been the biggest stigma is having to tell, you know, again, uh, uh, the civilian world and, uh, corporate America doesn't want, you know, isn't real, uh, nice to people in porno you know it's interesting i went um so obviously like with the family thing like i don't have an issue with that because my parents uh, got me into porn famous <laughs> but i you know now that i have a daughter i went to um like a small neighborhood party the other day and nobody said anything to me about it and i don't think anyone even thought it but you know i've been wanting to kind of like get together with other moms you know, for play dates and stuff, because, you know, when you have a kid, just your life just changes dramatically. And it's, it's hard to hang out with your sure. non-mom friends a lot because you constantly have to lug your baby around. Um, and for the first time I kind of had this like weird thought of, oh my God, these people may not want to be friends with me because of what I do for a living, which had never occurred to me before. You know, it's this whole new, like group of of people that I suddenly had like this fear of being ostracized from. I guess, but you're in California, so it's a little different. I think in California, you got a better chance of them being a lot more uh, uh, cool about it. Um, yeah. Uh, I think if you were in another state, somewhere you know more uh, uh, a more conservative southern type state, it'd be a lot worse. But yeah, I, I think that's still always going to be. And then what's funny is you're not, you're behind the camera, not even in front of it, which is crazy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. So. Um, and, and I think that that will always make it a little bit easier for me than it will for like actual performers. Um, but it was just like this well, thought. I don't that, see like, your only fans, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wow. I know. Does right? hubby get involved? Is there some POV with the hubby? There's no POV, but he does like shoot some of the content for me. So like he's on he's on board. Get a hand in there or anything? No, like, hand in there? it's very very tame. Like it's Playboy style. Like very tame. I don't do anything explicit. So it's kind of boring, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Lame. 
Lame. lame, super lame. Don't join it. It's super lame. It's onlyfans.com slash Holly I'm, Randall, I'm, but don't. <laughs> yes. I'm joining. Don't you dare I'm join. I'll be so embarrassed crazy. if you join. I've had like people like from my personal life join, like an ex-boyfriend joined and like didn't change his name on there. You know, like you think you'd go in with like a secret like username and it was his name. And I was like, dude, I fucking know who you are. It was like so embarrassing. <laughs> Anyways. I Enough about it. me. Um, so as... Okay. Sorry, I keep bringing it back to you because I'm just obsessed with you. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> Has there ever so, been a guy that you've um, almost gotten with on set? Have you ever like dropped the professionalism almost on set? Has there ever been a male performer? No, no, never. Never? Um, not even close? No. Not, no, no. I'm just like, you know what it is? I'm attracted to guys who don't really want to be on camera. That's always been my type. I think it's like, cause I like- Have you ready I, to kick like, anybody off set cause he got too handsy with you on, on camera, on set? No, I've never had a guy like grab me in an inappropriate way. I did have a guy who asked me out and I said no. And then afterwards he, on I think what was like a drug fueled rage, um, he did like go off on me online and made up a complete lie about how like I blew him on set, which wasn't true <laughs> at all. That's really, really funny. Weird. I'll tell you about it. That's a good visual. But... I'll use that in my scene later. <laughs> but it was like, you know, his, his rant. <laughs> I mean, his rant against me was coupled with a rant against a bunch of other people. So I don't think like anybody really believed gotcha. it, but, um, but no, like gotcha. most right, anyway, guys are on, like sorry. very respectful and kind to me. So um, they're they're lovely. I've never had a problem. Um, but as a professional uh, male performer, what is one piece of sex advice that you would give to men who maybe don't know their way around the female anatomy as well as they would like to? I mean, I will take your time. Uh, that's the mm -hmm. thing I would say is that nobody's in any hurry. I would uh, take things slow, um, figure out what she likes, and just uh, just have fun. I think taking your time is the biggest thing. There's no yeah. need to rush. And I always like to worry about her orgasm. Mine's going to happen no matter what, so... Uh, <laughs> that's a given. So might as well worry about hers because you know mine's coming. So there you go. That actually, that brings up another thing about performing that I think a lot of guys don't realize is so difficult. Do you find that staying hard for long periods of time or coming on, on cue, which one is the most difficult do you think? Well, coming on cue doesn't, you don't really have to come on cue anymore. I mean, you sort of have, uh, well, all right, a couple things. First of all, uh, as a male performer, you know what, 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 like, I can only come in spoon and reverse cowgirl from having sex. If it's not one of those two positions, I'm going to have to jerk off. But, mm -hmm. um, but if it's one of those two positions, then I just tell the producer or the director, hey, can we do one of those two last? And they always say mm -hmm. yes. So yeah. as a male performer, you just tell them, hey, look, this is what we're going to do if you want me to, to fuck to pop. Um, yeah, it's interesting that you bring that up because that is something, you know, I, I, it's funny. I don't think about these things, but people so often want to know like exactly what happens on scene and exactly how you set up scenes. And I just realized that that if I'm working with a new performer, a guy I don't know, one of the first things I ask is like, do you fuck to pop or do you want to set up for a pop shot? And then if they have a certain position that they can fuck to pop in, they tell me that and we talk about that before the scene. Uh, uh, but with new girls, oftentimes they don't know to get on their knees, stick their tongue out and look up at the camera. And so a lot of times setting up is actually preferable, which is makes it easier for the guy. Cause you can just jerk off at his leisure and then just start rolling when he's ready. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. And so, and so, yeah, so when you deal with new girls, sometimes, you know, it's easier for the guy because he has time to just jerk off. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so I'm interesting. I'm trying to think of who, who I, I what guy's think... the best, who's the best at just coming like whenever, wherever, I guess. God, I don't know. 
I get maybe strong. I, I don't Marco, remember Marco Banderas, like if he's not around anymore. <laughs> Is the porn life? <laughs> oh, that guy. Uh, don't get me started. Do you either. remember but, that uh, music video that he did? Yes. It was the worst. <laughs> he was such so a parody good. of himself. Uh, that's another guy who spent like 25000 on a watch. And I was like, oh, good work. You'll be saving your money, I'm sure. Um, yeah. So actually that you bring up a good point financially, what are some of the things that people should consider when they get into the industry? Well, everyone who gets into porno does so because they're completely broke or they wouldn't be getting into porno in the first place. Everyone, anyone who says they got into porno to, because they wanted it to be to sex or because of whatever, it's like, get the hell out of here. They're broke and they want to make good money quick and easy and fast. So that's the first thing we all get in this business because we fucked up our finances. Uh, maybe not you because your mom was such a legend, but you know what I mean. So, yeah. so I think the first thing to do is I think is you have to figure out uh, 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 how much you're making every month. I think you have to, um, uh, uh, you really have to take your your finances seriously. Um, learn how to budget, which is huge. People in porno don't know how to budget. Um, I think you have to figure out how to spend less than you make, which is another thing people in porno hate to do. Um, and you have to figure out how to increase your revenue as much as you can. And and uh, what I did was uh, I wanted to. I, I realized that when I realized when I first started that I was fucked if I ever tried to get a job in corporate America, it just wasn't going to happen. And so um, the first goal of mine was if I was going to get into porno and then porno, my porn career was going to be over. I knew it was going to be a long time before I got a job in the real world. So I needed money to bridge that gap so my whole goal when i first got into porno was building a nest egg building a nest egg building a nest egg so i rented a room from a director named mike metropolis you probably don't remember he was married to kay lynn do you remember him you remember kay lynn no and uh and uh, I, I paid 800 bucks a month and uh, i basically ate top ramen and water and i would do a scene work out Come back home, do a scene, work out, come back home. And I would just try to save money, save money, save money. And then uh, uh, for like two years, basically, that's all I did was try to build, save money, save money, save money. And then and then go from there. Once you have a nest egg, life becomes a lot easier because you don't live and die with every unforeseen bill. How old were you when you got into the industry? 26, 27. Do you think that you had a better sense of being financially responsible because you were a little bit older versus if you'd gotten in when you were 18? No, because I'm a little bit smarter than those people because I have two college degrees when I got in the porn. I wasn't just some hick off the street, you know? It's, it's, mm-hmm. not, it's, not, it's, no, uh, it's no mystery why Mark and Francesca retire with, you know, a ton of money. It's because Mark has a, has a master's degree from Lola Marymount. You know what I mean? Like... The, the 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 people that end up being uh, well off and wealthy in this business are usually the ones that uh, uh, have university degrees to be completely honest or take their finances really really seriously you know like Lisa mm-hmm. Ann takes her finances extremely seriously and has taught herself you know good financial habits and good financial health. There, there's probably few people on this planet more disciplined than Lisa Ann. I mean, that woman is like a That's wonder. Crazy. Yeah. And she's been like that forever, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so, yeah, she's she's such a, a, a an inspiration um, in terms of how she runs her business. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, you know, I think she's a little hard on people sometimes, but that's just me <laughs> because, you know, she's, she doesn't, she doesn't suffer fools very easily. Yeah. Well, you don't either. So I feel like that's probably a big reason that you two get along so well. It's true. I miss her. I, the fact that she's in New York and I'm so far away. That's, you know, one of the things I do miss about being out of my own is that uh, I, the, the few people that I were friends with, it's much harder to. You know, when you live in Vegas and you're not in the, not being part of the mainstream porn circle, you yeah. know, is kind of a bummer because I don't get to see some of the people that I liked. Yeah. You know, Holly Randall you, included. 
I, well, I mean, I don't either. I just see people at work. I don't really go to conventions or events anymore. Not that there have been many because of COVID. Who the hell wants to go to conventions or events, though? You know what I mean? Like, we're so over. I mean, what's the point for us? What, are we finding new jobs? No. Yeah, I know. You know somebody do, do, somebody was asking. Actually, no, my husband. He was like, oh, we're going to go to the XBiz X3 convention. And I was like, I don't plan on it. He's like, well, you know, you can go network. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't need to network. I'm like, I know everybody. Right. If I need to talk to right. somebody, I just call well, them. My brand new, my brand new. Somebody know who we, who I am at this point. If they don't, then I don't want to work. Then fuck them. So you yeah, know, the only reason that ABN I would go nominations, my ex bis <laughs> nominations, yay! Right. <laughs> yeah, all my so, fucking yeah. all my awards. <laughs> there you go. I, I, was I mean, the only weird. reason I go to those now is. Um, the only reason I go to this now is to do my podcast. Um, I did my podcast from the AVN show two years ago and that was cool. So that's, that's a great reason for me to go. And that's probably the only reason I'll go in the future, but yeah, I'm just like, who's been the biggest star you've had. Who's the biggest star you've had in your podcast besides Lisa mm. Ann. We don't want to upset her. So she's the Angela. Biggest. I was, well, honestly, she's gonna be at the top Angela of my list. White. I mean, Angela way probably for someone that's as popular as she is, she could be such a cunt and she's not. Oh my God. She's, that's one of my favorite things about her. She's so gracious and humble and kind to everybody. You know what I mean? Like none of the fame that she's had has gone to her head at all. It's, it's truly incredible. And she's also like a really disciplined person. She I mean, is. Yeah, amazingly. Yeah. So yeah. Been. Yeah. God so knows, she, and she's, knows, she's also she's another one. Fans. Well, she's not, she's also another one who uh, has a college degree and I know is very fiscally yes. responsible as well. Right. So Christian, thank you so That's much it? for coming on. That's it. I got, I have a meeting uh, in 10 I minutes. I thought we so want to do like gossip. No, 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 no shit talking. No, nothing. No, no gossip. No, no inside we can, stories. We can, do, we can do that off camera. All right. All right. <laughs> That's fine. All right, what a <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me on Holly. I enjoy talking to you. I know you too. It was so lovely to reconnect and I Even hope I get to see you in person 14. again. Even with your 14.4 cable modem from 1990 <laughs> that you're using. Someone stole my router. What do you want from me? That's a likely excuse. You know who stole it? I had a whole set. You know who stole it? Michael J. Fox in his, uh, in his um, DeLorean from 1965. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right. all right christian can you tell everybody where they can find you online please uh yeah my twitter is christian triple x and the number one uh, my website is uh pure-ts.com and you can find all the other sites from there and uh that's really it thanks for listening hope you've joined hope you check it out fantastic and you guys can find me at Instagram on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall. If you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall and filtered. If you want to visit my only fans, which I again, almost Holly. never plug. Good Lord. Well, that's okay. Cause I'm not talking to you. So <laughs> I can cut out. Okay. I want to hear and it too. You- I got to join those only fans. <laughs> And if you want to join my OnlyFans, which I almost never plug, it is actually just go to moreholly.com um, and that'll take you straight there. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching wherever you are, and we'll see you next week. Going into a sex store can be overwhelming. You may spend hours browsing the shelves only to realize that you came home with stuff that you can't really use, or maybe you forgot like one crucial ingredient. This is why Like a Kitten is so amazing because they let you build your own box so you can kind of choose your own adventure. You get to choose one item out of each of their six categories, toys, beauty products, lubes and cleansers, games, sexy accessories, and lingerie. Go to likeakitten.com slash holly or use code holly at checkout or click the link in the episode's description.